September 12, Four Chariots Then I looked up again and saw four chariots coming from between two bronze mountains. The first chariot was pulled by red horses, the second by black horses, the third by white horses, and the fourth by powerful dappled gray horses. And what are these, my lord? I asked the angel who was talking with me. The angel replied, These are the four spirits of heaven who stand before the Lord of all the earth. They are going out to do his work. The chariot with black horses is going north. The chariot with white horses is going west. And the chariot with dappled gray horses is going south. The powerful horses were eager to set out to patrol the earth. And the Lord said, Go and patrol the earth. So they left at once on their patrol. Then the Lord summoned me and said, Look, those who went north have vented the anger of my spirit there in the land of the north. The Crowning of Jeshua Then I received another message from the Lord. Heldai, Tobijah, and Judea will bring gifts of silver and gold from the Jews exiled in Babylon. As soon as they arrive, meet them at the home of Josiah son of Zephaniah. Accept their gifts and make a crown from the silver and gold. Then put the crown on the head of Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Tell him this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Here is the man called the branch. He will branch out from where he is and build the temple of the Lord. Yes, he will build the temple of the Lord. Then he will receive royal honor and will rule as king from his throne. He will also serve as priest from his throne, and there will be perfect harmony between his two roles. The crown will be a memorial in the temple of the Lord to honor those who gave it, Heldai, Tobijah, Jedea, and Josiah, son of Zephaniah. People will come from distant lands to rebuild the temple of the Lord, and when this happens, you will know that my messages have been from the Lord of Heaven's armies. All this will happen if you carefully obey what the Lord your God says. Tatnai's Letter to King Darius But Tatnai, governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shethar Bazanai and their colleagues soon arrived in Jerusalem and asked, Who gave you permission to rebuild this temple and restore this structure? They also asked for the names of all the men working on the temple. But because their God was watching over them, the leaders of the Jews were not prevented from building until a report was sent to Darius, and he returned his decision. Tatanai's Letter to King Darius This is a copy of the letter that Tatanai, the governor, Shethar Bazanai, and the other officials of the province west of the Euphrates River sent to King Darius. To King Darius Greetings. The king should know that we went to the construction site of the temple of the great God in the province of Judah. It is being rebuilt with specially prepared stones, and timber is being laid in its walls. The work is going forward with great energy and success. We ask the leaders who gave you permission to rebuild this temple and restore this structure, and we demanded their names so that we could tell you who the leaders were. This was their answer. We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built here many years ago by a great king of Israel. But because our ancestors angered the God of heaven, he abandoned them to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who destroyed this temple and exiled the people to Babylonia. However, King Cyrus of Babylon, during the first year of his reign, issued a decree that the temple of God should be rebuilt. King Cyrus returned the gold and silver cups that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of Babylon. These cups were taken from that temple and presented to a man named Sheshbazar, whom King Cyrus appointed as governor of Judah. The king instructed him to return the cups to their place in Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple of God there on its original site. So this Sheshbazar came and laid the foundations of the temple of God in Jerusalem. The people have been working on it ever since, though it is not yet completed. Therefore, if it pleases the king, we request that a search be made in the royal archives of Babylon to discover whether King Cyrus ever issued a decree to rebuild God's temple in Jerusalem, and then let the king send us his decision in this matter. Darius Approves the Rebuilding So King Darius issued orders that a search be made in the Babylonian archives, which were stored in the treasury. But it was at the fortress at Ekbatana, in the province of Media, that a scroll was found. This is what it said. Memorandum. 
In the first year of King Cyrus's reign, a decree was sent out concerning the temple of God at Jerusalem. Let the temple be rebuilt on the site where Jews used to offer their sacrifices, using the original foundations. Its height will be 90 feet, and its width will be 90 feet. Every three layers of specially prepared stones will be topped by a layer of timber. All expenses will be paid by the royal treasury. Furthermore, the gold and silver cups, which were taken to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar from the temple of God in Jerusalem, must be returned to Jerusalem and put back where they belong. Let them be taken back to the temple of God. So King Darius sent this message. Now therefore, Tatnai, governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shethar Bazanai and your colleagues and other officials west of the Euphrates River, stay away from there. Do not disturb the construction of the temple of God. Let it be rebuilt on its original site, and do not hinder the governor of Judah and the elders of the Jews in their work. Moreover, I hereby decree that you are to help these elders of the Jews as they rebuild this temple of God. You must pay the full construction costs, without delay, from my taxes collected in the province west of the Euphrates River, so that the work will not be interrupted." Give the priests in Jerusalem whatever is needed in the way of young bulls, rams, and male lambs for the burnt offerings presented to the God of heaven. And without fail, provide them with as much wheat, salt, wine, and olive oil as they need each day. Then they will be able to offer acceptable sacrifices to the God of heaven and pray for the welfare of the king and his sons. Those who violate this decree in any way will have a beam pulled from their house. Then they will be tied to it and flogged, and their house will be reduced to a pile of rubble. May the God who has chosen the city of Jerusalem as the place to honor his name destroy any king or nation that violates this command and destroys this temple. I, Darius, have issued this decree. Let it be obeyed with all diligence. Tatanai, governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shethar Bazanai and their colleagues complied at once with the command of King Darius. So the Jewish elders continued their work, and they were greatly encouraged by the preaching of the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, son of Iddo. A Call to Justice and Mercy On December 7 of the fourth year of King Darius's reign, another message came to Zechariah from the Lord. The people of Bethel had sent Sherezer and Regamelech along with their attendants to seek the Lord's favor. They were to ask this question of the prophets and the priests at the temple of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Should we continue to mourn and fast each summer on the anniversary of the temple's destruction, as we have done for so many years? The Lord of Heaven's armies sent me this message in reply. Say to all your people and your priests, During the seventy years of exile, when you fasted and mourned in the summer and in early autumn, was it really for me that you were fasting? And even now, in your holy festivals, aren't you eating and drinking just to please yourselves? Isn't this the same message the Lord proclaimed through the prophets in years past, when Jerusalem and the towns of Judah were bustling with people, and the Negev and the foothills of Judah were well populated? Then this message came to Zechariah from the Lord. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says, Judge fairly and show mercy and kindness to one another. Do not oppress widows, orphans, foreigners, and the poor, and do not scheme against each other. Your ancestors refused to listen to this message. They stubbornly turned away and put their fingers in their ears to keep from hearing. They made their hearts as hard as stone, so they could not hear the instructions or the messages that the Lord of Heaven's armies had sent them by His Spirit through the earlier prophets. That is why the Lord of Heaven's armies was so angry with them. Since they refused to listen when I called to them, I would not listen when they called to me, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. As with a whirlwind, I scattered them among the distant nations, where they lived as strangers. Their land became so desolate that no one even traveled through it. They turned their pleasant land into a desert. Promised Blessings for Jerusalem Then another message came to me from the Lord of Heaven's armies. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. My love for Mount Zion is passionate and strong. I am consumed with passion for Jerusalem. And now the Lord says, I am returning to Mount Zion, and I will live in Jerusalem. 
Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city. The mountain of the Lord of heaven's armies will be called the holy mountain. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Once again, old men and women will walk Jerusalem's streets with their canes and will sit together in the city squares, and the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls at play. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. All this may seem impossible to you now, a small remnant of God's people. But is it impossible for me, says the Lord of Heaven's armies? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. You can be sure that I will rescue my people from the east and from the west. I will bring them home again to live safely in Jerusalem. They will be my people, and I will be faithful and just toward them as their God. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Be strong and finish the task. Ever since the laying of the foundation of the temple of the Lord of Heaven's armies, you have heard what the prophets have been saying about completing the building. Before the work on the temple began, there were no jobs and no money to hire people or animals. No traveler was safe from the enemy, for there were enemies on all sides. I had turned everyone against each other. But now... I will not treat the remnant of my people as I treated them before, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, for I am planting seeds of peace and prosperity among you. The grapevines will be heavy with fruit, the earth will produce its crops, and the heavens will release the dew. Once more, I will cause the remnant in Judah and Israel to inherit these blessings. Among the other nations, Judah and Israel became symbols of a cursed nation, but no longer. Now I will rescue you and make you both a symbol and a source of blessing. So don't be afraid. Be strong and get on with rebuilding the temple. For this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. I was determined to punish you when your ancestors angered me, and I did not change my mind, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. But now I am determined to bless Jerusalem and the people of Judah. So don't be afraid. But this is what you must do. Tell the truth to each other. Render verdicts in your courts that are just and that lead to peace. Don't scheme against each other. Stop your love of telling lies that you swear are the truth. I hate all these things, says the Lord. Here is another message that came to me from the Lord of Heaven's armies. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. The traditional fasts and times of mourning you have kept in early summer, midsummer, autumn, and winter are now ended. They will become festivals of joy and celebration for the people of Judah. So love truth and peace. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. People from nations and cities around the world will travel to Jerusalem. The people of one city will say to the people of another, Come with us to Jerusalem to ask the Lord to bless us. Let's worship the Lord of Heaven's armies. I'm determined to go. Many peoples and powerful nations will come to Jerusalem to seek the Lord of Heaven's armies and to ask for His blessing. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. In those days, ten men from different nations and languages of the world will clutch at the sleeve of one Jew. And they will say, please let us walk with you, for we have heard that God is with you.